Yeah. All right. Welcome to Vancouver Carpenter. Um, I'm actually going to show you guys some real basic carpentry here. This is how to frame a wall. Um, and we're keeping it as simple as possible. And it's not even a wall. Come check out what we're doing here inside one of my friend's houses. I don't put on the tool belt unless we're building one of these these days. So if you can see if the lighting's good enough, you can see what we got going on in here. Anyways, let's get back to that wall. Um, yeah, I don't know if you'll learn anything from this video or not. It may just be for the entertainment value of the faithful subscribers. And I want to say thank you, you guys, if you're some of those. Okay, first, layout. So in this case, I actually need one foot on center layout. Um, so I've got my plates here. Right, that's the top and bottom of my wall. Uh, I don't need two pencils, just need one. Here, come up closer now. You're going to need to see this. So we're going to lay out from this end. And a lot of the time we have these nailed together so that they don't move when you're pulling your tape. Uh, but, all right, if we're going one foot on center, so we're going to pick one foot. Now I'm not going to make a mark right in the center. What we're going to do is we're going to go three quarters of an inch back. So that way it actually lands on center. And you don't have to do it like this. I'm kind of farting around there. Um, but anyways, now on that side of the line is 12 foot on center. So what that means is that if you've got like four foot material, it's always going to land in the center of your joist. So usually it's 16 foot on center, which will be this line right here. That line 32 and then 48. And that is so your sheet goods always land on the center of a stud. So a lot of people make the mistake of when they lay out for their framing, they go 16 on center and they mark that line and then they put the stud right there. And so once you go and start trying to hang your drywall or your sheathing, it doesn't work out because you're not landing on the center of the stud or joist. So that's a really common mistake when people do their layout for framing or for sheetrock. Anyways, let's finish this. And it's this right here. So you only really need to do a little mark. All right, one foot on center. So again, three quarters of an inch back. We do that because this material is an inch and a half thick. Three quarters of an inch back. And we're good. We really don't need to mark the ends. Um, you should be able to figure out where that goes. And so generally, we'll square across with a speed square. Square cloth. Square with cloth. Square across. You know, I've even seen people do, check this out. I've even seen people do these ridiculous things where they have this fancy way of marking the X's where they'll go like, boom, boom. Two strokes, one mark, instead of four. Isn't that fancy? Can you see that? <laughs> like, whoop, whoop. <laughs> I don't know, that's kind of cool. But I think it would take a little bit of practice to get used to it. Anyways, let's put this thing together. So, we are going to hand nail this one, old school, in a fun way. And, excuse me, I got the sniffles. So, I got a bunch of rusty old nails that have been sitting in my garage for like six years. Alright, first things first. Yeah, this is a hand nailing video now. First things first, get all your nails oriented the same way. So, just pull them out. Let's take a close look at these rusty old nails. Yeah, pull them out like that. And you're gonna see why this is beneficial. So if you're putting them in your tool belt, I always have all of my three inch spikes oriented the same direction. And it's gonna be in, you know, whatever way is the easiest to pull out. So boom, they're right in my hand, ready to go. Now I've probably got too many in my hand, so I'm probably gonna be clumsy here. But anyway. Okay, so line her up right there. And the flatter the ground, the better. Uh, we're doing this on brick, so this could be interesting. And I don't have my regular framing hammer. I've got this small faced um, sort of medium. It's not a finish, it's not a frame. But anyways, I'm standing on it to put a little pressure here. And it's as simple as, so if it looks lined up there, get her started. I got too many nails in my hand right now, but by the end of this, it'll be a little faster. I'll straighten it out with my foot. Yeah. 
again, line it up, stand on it with my foot to hold it flush, and standing on it with your foot also stops it from moving. Yeah, I have way too many nails in my hand. I'm gonna solve that here. I'd say usually about like 10 nails tops is sort of the most ergonomic amount of nails to hold in your hand. Flatten it out. Yeah, rusty nails also don't sink too fast. You get those nice, oily, brand new, bright nails. A lot better. Well, honestly, I miss hand nailing. Um, I've worked as a form worker a lot. So when you're framing, generally you're never hand nailing a wall together like this. Um, when I did this the most was actually doing concrete form work. So that is where we used to hand nail all the time because on a concrete form work site, you know, like they're huge sites and I was usually doing like curbs and small walls and you just, you're not going to bring a compressor around the whole site. Oh, I'm getting my swing back. Come around this side. Square that up a little. I can feel it's out. There we go. Honestly, I absolutely love hand nailing. There's a total zen to hand nailing. Anybody who's done a lot of it knows what I'm talking about. Something seems off on these measurements. Oh, let's just nail it together and find out. I've actually been wanting to make a little hand nail video forever. Oh, the headless nail. The old headless nails. Those don't work. Those nails, we're almost done here. Oh, I would love to do some form work again. I never want to work on a commercial construction site ever again, but I would love to do some form work. Okay, let's see if I can actually sink some of these a little faster. That's better. Oh, and of course we got this one with the massive knot here to finish off on. Try and go a little under the knot. It's probably going to explode all over the place. Ah. There we go. Knot flush. Something isn't right here. Maybe I think the helper's measurement is off by somewhere. That's okay. I forgive him. He's filming. All right. Let's go put this where it belongs. So this is the flat bottom for the ramp. Outside where there's some better light. That's it. Um, that's your basic, you know, layout and how to hand nail and hand frame a wall together. If you're doing, you know, your own home renovations, hopefully that comes in handy for you guys. Just want to say thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter, and it's been my pleasure to share a little bit of actual carpentry experience. So, thanks for watching. Till the next video, you guys.